Welcome to East Tennessee Pinball. Today, I'm gonna to start working on this Star Wars just came in. So this game came in and it was a kind of a Joe Star Wars. It was broke. Uh, got in, it said, it said it was kind of working intermittently and it, it, the first time times when it would boot versus not boot got worse and worse and worse. And when it came in today, it wouldn't boot at all. So I uh, popped it open. I've got the power supply out right now. I've been monkeying with it a little bit, but uh, there was three fuses that were blown. This fuse right there and two more on the power supply. One was a high voltage for the display and the other one was one of the solenoid fuses. So I swapped all those three fuses. It booted up. I'm like, well, huh, that's funny. to have three fuses blown. And they didn't immediately blow again. And I'm thinking, well, that's, it's almost, I don't like that because then it's like, you don't want to give the guy back his game because they're probably going to blow again. So I started, I tried to get blue boot up a game playing with it and flippers were dead. And, but then I noticed I'd hear something. If I hit the flipper, this little kickback here would go on both of them, either flipper. So the flip and so the flippers, and if you watched them, the flippers would just kind of like barely move. So it didn't have any uh, flippers. Also didn't have power to the, well, I guess you call them a VUC of, of sorts. It, it's basically, it's got a, like a slingshot mechanism that kicks like that, goes back up. Or maybe it's actually these. Anyway, there's a couple of, uh, couple of other voltage coils. So I measured the voltage on the coils. The, the coil voltage of the flippers was basically zero and for those two vucks i don't know if they're these two or they're two back here in any case uh so we got some voltage issues uh anyway i pulled this board out i've got it sitting over my bench i went through it measured all the components they, they looked good uh i did reflow the solder on it uh i believe yeah so this this game's got a this flipper board it makes its own voltage for the flippers so I'm going to pull this thing out next, but let me show you what I've got on the, on the flipper board. So this game has been recapped before and, uh, you know, somebody put some decent caps in there. They're, if you can see on there, Necrochrome. Anyway, this one here looks pretty nasty. I'm betting that is an old... That's old corrosion. But just in case it's not, I'm gonna pull that cap, clean it up a little bit, and then replace it. Uh, the guy told me that he's had this pin for like 20 years, and I don't think this has been replaced in that 20 year period. So these caps are still kind of old anyway. I don't really wanna go through and replace them all, because I know he's trying to keep it kind of on a budget. So, but I'm gonna replace, I'm gonna take that one off, clean it up, and then replace that one in case that is reached recent belching of that capacitor uh then i'll throw this back in there and uh kind of call it good the gi connector goes on here is going to be replaced it's all burnt up pretty common but uh i think that's all i'm going to do this power supply i think i haven't measured every single voltage coming out of it but i think most of it's working so here's what the cap looked like underneath so maybe it did recently belch out i don't know i'm going to measure it and see if see what kind of readings i get on it so it's supposed to be 100 by 25, so we should see about 100 uh, micro farads here, if I can get it on there. Wow, it looks like nothing. So maybe this did recently blow up. Yeah, it's got nothing. So I'm glad I did swap that. Yeah, that leg there is just, yeah, it's just falling off. So anyway, I, so I am, what I'm going to do here is get some, a little bit of vinegar, 50-50 vinegar, and uh, clean this board up a little bit and, some, and a toothbrush and clean it up and maybe... Yeah, I actually I've got somewhere around here. I've got a uh, little 
fiberglass eraser tool. I'm gonna try to see if I can find that. So I got it cleaned up fairly well. It calls for 100 by 25 volts. I'm gonna put in a 100 by 50 volts and uh, maybe it'll hold up a little bit better. I mean this, well, I don't know when these were done. I think 20 years ago, uh, that's when the guy got it. And he bought it from a guy that, uh, electronics kind of guy that routed games. So I'm guessing that guy recapped it. But I think that one's pretty common, com pretty commonly fails. I had one other data east and I believe it had the same issue. So we'll get this thing soldered up here. That could have been, as that thing was failing, why it was kind of going there mentally. I'm not, I'd have to look at the schematic to see exactly what that's driving. It's coming off this uh, rectifier there. I guess I could look, maybe I will. So that's uh, DB1. Let me see what that's, see what that's driving. Well, here's C2. You follow it downstream to the right, it goes through a chip, it's regulating, and it's all coming out here. Gone over to the five volt volts, and the five volts is what running all the chips. So that could have been made, made making the five volts unstable. And then when it crapped out, you know, maybe maybe things locked on, blew some other fuses. I don't know. I'm just making up a story because I don't really know what happened, but it seems plausible. All right, so I got the board back in the game. There's that connector, the GI connector, the last pin is just about to fall out because it's all burnt up. Got some old batteries. I'm guessing those batteries are at least 20 years old. Not a bit of corrosion and they're still holding the memory, which is just blows me away. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn this game on. Soundboard boots up immediately on this game. Han, I don't know, Han, uh, Obi-Wan talks to you. Uh, I think we're booted. It takes a while for the, for the main screen to come up. There we go. Okay, uh, let, me, let me drop the play field and we'll start again. Okay. Yes. I just threw another ball in there. Let's see if it's gonna go. Zero balls missing. That's what it says. weird let me throw another ball now i'm thinking of it i think probably what it is it's got a ball down there but it's not want to start the game because it doesn't have three balls back at home so it knows it's got three balls but they're just it can't get them back home because those bucks are not working so i just threw one more ball down so now it's the game's got four or five balls in it but it did have the three at home so it'll start let me show you when i press flippers here see that kicker over the side that's operating with my flipper you know my, my flipper well if it's held up just a little bit let me take the other side can you see it moving it will move a little bit if i hold it up a little bit so it's see that anyway crazy stuff i've already gone through this switch yeah, test yeah. if i put it in switch test the flippers it only registers right flipper and left flipper so i don't think it's a i don't think it's a switch matrix problem uh and i don't so the other thing is i don't have voltage so the first thing i'm going to do is get voltage to the flippers the flipper voltage is made via this rectifier right here so next thing i'm going to do is yank out this flipper board and i bet i find something wrong with it well, it wasn't until I got this thing pulled out that I even saw this last fuse. I measured all these, and this one, I guess there was wires up above it. Anyway, I didn't see it, and it's blown, and I'm pretty sure that's probably the input, F5. Let me look. Yeah, that's the input to that bridge rectifier. Uh, I just measured that with my multimeter, did a diode test on that bridge rectifier. It measures good. Not much else on the circuit. Uh, a couple of caps, a power cap, a little baby cap, and resistor. So I'm going to measure those three components, see if any of those are shorted. Uh, so they should all measure 8.2 kilo ohms across them because they're all in parallel with this resistor. And uh, I guess that's about all I can measure. 
and uh, see if see if I get that measurement. So let's see if I should measure 8.2 right here. Oh, yeah. So it's 8.2, and it took a kind of had to charge that that big capacitor up. Uh, it's 100, 250. Is that what it's supposed to be? 100, 250. Yeah. Somebody's again. That's somebody swapped it. Thing looks fine. Uh, I'm gonna while I've got this out, I'm gonna go ahead and check these other transistors, check all these diodes, everything on here that I can check easily, and swap this fuse out, and I'm gonna drop it back in the game. All right, I'm gonna start with these big transistors. The, the middle tab on most of these are gonna be in line with the center, so I'm gonna go between the other two. Oh, that's blown. Okay. That's a bad biscuit right there. Uh, I'm going, huh? Oh. Let's see if it's, let me get my marker. That's, that's what probably caused all the problems on this game. Yeah. That's, cause that's, that's the ground leg or that's common with this and that should not be shorted like that. Okay. Yeah. Point. Yeah, y'all can see that number. So like 0.58, that's perfect. So all the rest of these, we'll see. These little baby diodes, 1404s, if I can get them to... Oops, I'm doing it backwards. Yeah, you got to go towards the uh, banded side, so the positive's got to be on the other side. Swap around this dude over here, and then there's a whole mess of them over here. Fortunately, I just bought some of those tip thirty sixes. So I needed to pull this board anyway. If I'd have done that, I'd started the game, hit the flipper, and it would have blown. So that's got to come out. I just turned on my iron. It's not quite hot enough yet. Something like this, I'm gonna try to bend those legs up before I try to yank it off because I don't wanna tear up those traces. And those are big honking legs. People say don't use your iron as a, as a screwdriver, but tips don't cost that much, you know? And I don't have a heated screwdriver. Side. All right, so now I got them all pretty much straight. So I'm just going to try to get them all hot at once and yank it out if I can. I've been thinking about getting, well, they're so big. I need to get a shovel soldering iron. It's got the big blade. I can get all three of them hot at once pretty easy. Oops. Yeah, it's about to fall. It fell out. Nice and clean. So that's no bueno. So this new one doesn't look exactly like the old ones. The grounding pad is all inside of there, but uh, it says tip 36 sure enough on there. So I'm gonna mount it, kind of lay it down like the other ones are. Oh, that was not far enough up. And sort that dude in.
having to hold it with my finger on the back side at the same time so it stays laid down. I guess I could bend it afterwards, but it wouldn't lay down quite as flat. There we go. Okay. So, swap this out, and that is supposed to be a 5 amp slow blow. Put that in there, throw it back in the game, and maybe we'll be up and running. Or maybe it will immediately blow the fuse and blow that transistor again. Who knows? All right, so I got the flipper board back in there. And now I see why I didn't see that fuse because it was hanging right underneath there. But anyway, I'm glad I didn't see it because I took the board out before I start burning fuses up because that one was definitely fried. So, if you boot it up, I'm going to keep it on that fuse there, see if it fries right away, F5. Oh, it's kicking all the balls out, man. Yeah, I've got a bunch of balls, too many balls, okay. So it just kicked three balls out of various places in the game, so that's good news. Uh, let me look this thing up and around so we can see what's going on. We may be a ball short now. One ball missing. Throw one ball in there. Okay, Let's see if the flippers work. We have flippers. We have flippage. Let's see if it'll kick a ball. All right, so we're up and we're up and playing. Yoda. So it's kind of working now. Uh, you see those switches are toast. I don't think that one's. Some of some of these switches. That one's working. That one is. I don't think this one is. No. These drop targets are pretty sorry shape. There's old rubber that's just, yeah, these don't hurt. So some of the stuff's working, some's not. There's a, that, this little, I think there's a gate, that motor's supposed to come around or down. It's unplugged under the play field, so I haven't plugged that back in yet. I, I'm, I'm guessing that thing's been unplugged for 20 years. Uh, so I'm kind of afraid to plug it in. I wanted to get other stuff fixed before I plugged that in. I didn't want to have, you know, two broken things at once. Fix one thing, then plug in another. And if, it, if it crashes, then I'll know where to look. Uh, so I've got to go to a, go meet somebody here in a little bit. So I think I'm going to stop here for the moment. But uh, I'm happy with what I got done this morning here. Uh, still got to pull this board, do something with that. I think I've got some NV RAM for this board. So I think I'll do that. Uh, so I think I'll call this one a success for the moment. Got it up and running. So I still don't, so we had two issues. I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. Blew that transistor and we had that bad cap up here on the five volts. It could have been that. Well, it's making a little bit of noise through the speaker. The data ether are known for doing that, but this is... A little bit extra annoying so i don't know about that so anyway i'll take that for another day so until next time cheers i figured out the noise it's not speaker hum it's this motor turning it's just a lot that motor is just kind of like so i don't know if i'll maybe i don't know if it's geared or i don't know i'll, I'll look at it again another day enough for one day